Hello folks and welcome to the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Creatures tier list. We're going to be working our way through all 126 creatures uh, that you can purchase in the towns in the game. I haven't been able to see anywhere else on YouTube where anyone has tried to cram all the creatures into a single tier list, so I think it's high time someone did that. So sit back, relax, and uh, we'll get cracking. We're not going to be just putting Archangels in the S tier and, say, the Pikemen here in the F tier uh, because Archangels are amazing on the battlefield and Pikemen are way less good. Um, what we're looking for here is value. We're looking for value for money, primarily, but also accessibility, how easy it is to get the creatures online relative to how much impact they have on the battlefield and your overall strategy. And we're also going to be thinking about the opportunity cost uh, of going down and in a certain path, investing your money in a particular creature. I'm going to be working my way down from Castle to Conflux, uh, which is the order that the towns appear in the game menu. And uh, we'll start with Tier 1, work our way through all the Tier 1s, and then cycle back uh, to go on to the Tier 2s and so on up to Tier 7. So let's get cracking. Um, Castle Town Tier 1, let's get started with Pikemen and Halberdiers. Uh, the Pikeman is really solid, uh, really, really solid creature, 10 HP, uh, very, very relevant presence on the battlefield in the uh, early game and the mid game. The movement 4 can be a bit of a um, letdown, but usually you will be fighting on grass uh, and they get the plus one movement in that early part of the week. So I like for the Pikeman to start us off, I think it's a really solid unit, uh, I'm going to say somewhere in the B category. Uh, for the pikemen. The halberdier, one issue, obviously the halberdier is more powerful on the battlefield than the pikemen. Uh, one issue with the halberdier though is that you do have to invest the gold to upgrade the town and then the, the higher cost of buying the troops and that's money that you could be spending on uh, marksmen or archers marksmen and then griffins later in, um, in the castle town and both of those units are awesome as we'll see so there's a bit of an opportunity cost with halberdiers. They're a little bit less exciting, um, and uh, they don't come online as as quickly as other tier one upgrade units do. Uh, so I think it's still a really solid unit. The halberdier um, I might put it towards the edge of the B tier. I'll just make sure that uh, I'm not going off the screen. We'll be moving the creatures around as we go uh, to to sort of make everything fit together. Happy with this for now. That's. Uh, Castle Tier 1. So, moving through the towns, the next town on the list is the Rampart. And we have Centaurs and Centaur Captains. Uh, centaurs are pretty solid creature. They do a good job of um, sort of striking quickly. They've got nice movement. They do tend to die a little bit more easily than I would like. And in terms of expense, the amount of Centaurs you get, the number you get for the money that you spend, it's just okay. They're, they're a fine unit, especially obviously in, in the first early part of the game, uh, but nothing to write home about. You don't want to be stuck with these guys into the, into the mid-game in particular. Now, Centaur Captains, on the other hand, are a significant upgrade to the normal Centaur. They hit harder, and you'll be quite happy uh, having a large stack of these in the mid-game. Um, again, though, relative to the amount of money you're investing and the timeliness of when they come on stream, in terms of excitement factor, I wouldn't be massively more excited uh, about Centaur Captains than I am with, um, say, Halberdiers or something like that. Um, so perhaps we'll move these guys to this sort of region. We'll, we'll see about whether or not we want to, uh, to keep them there as the, um, as the thing goes on. Moving through the towns, the next cab off the rank is the Gremlin. We're in the tower. Talking about Gremlins. So the basic Gremlin is absolute garbage. Uh, one of the worst units in the game on the battlefield. The main thing you want to be doing with your gremlins is keeping them alive. Keep them alive as long as you possibly can so that they can be upgraded into master gremlins. And this is the first example of a unit that we'll talk about where the base version of the unit is completely different to the upgraded version. The base version, movement 4, HP 4, they die like flies on the battlefield. Really, you do not want to be fighting with them. I would say that they're more or less an F level unit in terms of excitement factor for wanting to have them into the, any, any distance into the early game. You want to upgrade them to Master Gremlins. The Master Gremlin is a ranged unit, um, still very squishy, but the ranged attack actually hits quite hard, 
The master gremlins uh, hit really hard relative to um, their expense. It's not very expensive at all to upgrade from normal gremlins to master gremlins and something you want to do fairly urgently. I actually really, really like these uh, units. I'm excited to spend money on them well into the mid game and you'll still be picking up just about every one that you can. So I think we have our first A grade unit. I wouldn't give it an A plus, but it's, it's a solid A grade unit relative to the other uh, tier one uh, upgrade units, uh, in my opinion anyway. Moving through to the Evil Towns now, we have the Inferno uh, is the first one off the rank, and we've got Imps at Tier 1, and Familiars is the upgrade. Imps are atrocious, really, really bad. They have movement 5 instead of movement 4 compared to the Gremlin, so they move a bit quicker. And in large numbers, they can surprise you. One thing that really works uh, with both of these is when you do have an Impcation nearby, the, uh, the Inferno at the beginning, you can pile into getting a big pile of these. Uh, fairly early in the game and be pretty happy with yourself if you if you if you pull that off. Basic vanilla imps on their own though are very unexciting. Um, I put them probably somewhere in the E category. Familiars are a pretty substantial upgrade uh, to the imp. They have movement seven, better attack and defense, and uh, generally are going to be more relevant for longer. In the very late game, you can end up with a large snowball of familiars that can be relevant in a fight. Okay, they're going to die on mass, but. Um, they also do have the Drain Magic uh, ability where they drain magic from the opponent and give you the magic. A couple of spell points, but um, can actually add up over the course of a fight if you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a tight sort of fight. I think overall, though, as a upgraded Tier 1 unit, Familiars are probably in the somewhere in the D, uh, D category. Not particularly exciting, but not particularly terrible. Uh, we have the Necropolis next. We're talking about Skeletons and Skeleton Warriors. Skeletons are obviously a really important kind of base unit for the uh, Necropolis, uh, for the Necromancy skill if you've got uh, a strategy whereby you are piling in to uh, Necromancy as a skill uh, amongst your heroes, then the Skeletons are going to be really, really relevant. I kind of like to think of these as sort of a base unit, and perhaps a C-grade unit that we can sort of pivot almost everything else around. With Skeleton Warriors, You've got a conundrum on your hands. You're going to have heroes out exploring, uh, expanding your frontage. If they're necromancers and necromancy skill, uh, every single necropolis hero has necromancy, they're going to be raising basic skeletons after each fight. It's sort of the gimmick is that you kill a bunch of wandering monsters, reanimate them as skeletons, which is really, really cool. I say it's a gimmick, it's actually a really cool feature. Here's the problem. As you go into the mid-game, you're, you've only got seven slots in your army, and you kind of need to keep one of those free so that you can raise these things. If you are habitually buying skeleton warriors from your hometown, that can present a sort of a, a problem. If you're able to easily get back to your hometown regularly to upgrade your skeletons into skeleton warriors, it can be a whole thing where you, you're able to actually build a large mass of these uh, in the early game, and, the, and that becomes your strategy. Skeleton warriors becomes your strategy. So a little bit circumstantial, situational skeleton warriors. Uh, often you'll find you better just to stick with normal skeletons. Uh, sometimes it'll be uh, correct or appropriate to go for skeleton warriors. Overall, I don't think they deserve a massively different ranking. Uh, still something I'm happy to pour money into. Not particularly excited about, um, yeah, about it, but uh, also not particularly disappointed either. Let's move on to the dungeon now. We're talking about troglodytes and infernal troglodytes. Uh, I can't help but like the troglodyte. I, I, I can't really explain why that is. Um, I like them. They, they tend to have, if you start in your dungeon in the underground, all of your troglodytes are going to have movement 5 instead of 4 right from the off. They have solid stats relative to the amount of money you have to spend on them. And you can get the mushroom rings, which lets you get tons more extra troglodytes how many, more, how many more, I can't exactly remember, but enough to really make an impact, and you're going to want to invest in the Mushroom Rings, you're going to want to invest in uh, in these. You're also, by the way, then going to want to spend the money to upgrade to Infernals, because Infernals get the extra movement, and it's not very expensive to, to upgrade into Infernals. Where do I want to put them? Um, hmm, tier C for now? Um, if the Infernal Troglodyte is a C... Uh, I kind of want to bring. Well, I might leave the. I might leave him there. I'm not sure how I feel about this. 
Do I like these better than a centaur? I think I do. So we'll do that for now. Okay. Moving on, we have, uh, we're out of the evil towns and into the neutral towns. We're talking here about the goblins of the stronghold. We've got goblins and hobgoblins. Uh, a normal goblin is not particularly impressive. He has movement five, which is better than this other stuff. But the rough ground terrain doesn't really change that to movement six that much. You'll have rough terrain near your base, probably. Um, but there isn't a lot of rough terrain on the map a lot of the time. If you play the random map style that I uh, that, that, that that I tend to like playing, um, I don't get excited about spending a lot of money on goblins. Noting that they are, um, that th there is a uh, accelerated building. Let's call them accelerated buildings, where you get an extra eight goblins per week, uh, which does improve their um, usefulness, in my opinion, uh, quite substantially. I might just promote familiars a little bit while I'm here. Hobgoblins uh, get a pretty significant increase to movement, which uh, is actually quite relevant. Uh, but they do die easily. Uh, not particularly amazing, not particularly terrible. Uh, somewhere in the C category, uh, I think. Okay, what's next? We have the fortress. We're talking about gnolls and gnoll marauders. Uh, a gnoll... A basic knoll is a really solid unit. Um, big beefy HP, just like the pikeman. Uh, movement 4 kind of hits a similar profile and feel to a pikeman. It doesn't really feel right to put it in a different tier to the pikeman, uh, for the same reason we talked about at the beginning. Really, really happy to invest money in these. And if we haven't gotten around to upgrading them, um, still really relevant uh, into the mid-game. I think Null Marauders are worth the upgrade and something you want to do quite quickly. Yes, you have Lizard Men, Lizard Warriors, and you have Serpent Flies and Dragon Flies to come, which all are going to be wanting money and resources and, and investment. Uh, but I think these are slightly more accessible than the Halberdier. Um, so I think they're a little bit better. They're still in the, B t in the B tier. But in terms of excitement and when you can get them online relative to the amount of money you have to spend... Uh, I do I do consider these to be um, better value for money uh, in that context. Um, so Null Marauder is still a really, really good uh, upgrade choice. And the final neutral town we have is the Conflux. Uh, if you're interested in Conflux, you can see me playing Conflux in uh, a recent video that I've been posting. Um, I've nearly finished posting all of the episodes of that. In these two units, you have something similar happening to the Gremlins. Uh, what happened to the Gremlins? Sprites, uh, movement 7 right off the cuff, very, very good flying. Uh, and against the kind of random goblin type opponents you see in the first week or two around your base, these are absolutely fine. You can get some really good work done with them. However, similar to the gremlins, you don't want to be stuck with these for long. You're going to want to preserve their lives so that you can upgrade them. Um, the sprite is absolutely spectacular. She goes from movement 7 to movement 9 and no enemy retaliation. So there's an absolute combo we'll be coming back to right through this tier list. Fast units with high movement and no enemy and no enemy retaliation are fantastic. Just it's really really good and it's possible to just win fights with no losses as a result or stack uh, the odds massively in your favor by waiting and uh, tactically uh, setting your, your troops up to, to wait and then attack later in the in the combat. Relative uh, to the other tier 1 units, the upgradables like halberdiers, we're looking at normal marauders, these things are just so, so much better. The other thing is that you can get tons of them. You can get um, uh, the Magical Garden, which gives you an extra 10 per week. And then when you buy them, they're extremely cheap. They're like 30 gold each to buy. You can get a huge swarm of them early in the game, and just completely take over the early game as a Conflux. Conflux does pay for that uh, later, in particularly in the mid-range, where we'll be talking about the Elementals, which, spoiler alert, I'm not a massive fan of. Um, but uh, until then, I think we absolutely have our first S-tier unit, the Humble Sprite, uh, which can just do so much work. Uh, such, a, such a great unit. So we're off to Tier 2, uh, back to the castle, and we're talking about Archers and Marksmen. Um, a tale of two units once again. The normal archer um, only has HP 10, but it packs an awful punch. You can sometimes be stuck with these for various reasons for a while before you're able to upgrade them. 
Um, but a really, really good unit, uh, like a really solid ranged unit. I don't want to be stuck using it for very long because uh, the upgrade is unbelievable. Marksman gets increased movement and two shots instead of one. They double in terms of uh, the, the, the power output, the, the damage output. These things are value for money wise, absolutely spectacular. Uh, they are a menace uh, to uh, fight against if they're in a monster stack on their own, and they're a menace if you come up against uh, an enemy hero with these in the first few weeks. Into the mid-game, these guys en masse uh, can still be absolutely devastating, and they'll still even make an appearance in the late game. Uh, really, really relevant. Extremely easy to get online, extremely powerful. I think this is, for now, an S-tier unit. Um, maybe slightly better than the sprites. Uh, you're very, very happy to spend money on marksmen. Getting to the marksmen, in lieu of getting to something else, delaying your griffins if you have to in order to get these guys up. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but uh, they're, they're really, really strong. Um, special unit for me. Moving down to the rampart, tier two is the dwarves. Dwarfs or dwarves, depending on your allegiance to various nomenclature. Uh, the basic dwarf is really, really unexciting. He has movement 3, HP 20 is really, really fat and solid. But movement 3 really stinks. He often misses out on the fight, or he only comes in at the very, very end after all the hard work's been done by somebody else, usually centaurs, or obviously elves we'll be talking about soon. I think these are a D. Um, one interesting thing, I have to confess, I've played the game since 1999, and it was only about three years ago I realised with this image that the dwarf is facing this way. I, I had I had this weird thing where I was, when I'm looking at the picture, I can see him kind of looking out at me, like his, le his right eye in the picture, in my mind, was his left eye, and he's looking out... <laughs> he's looking out at me and holding his hammer... Anyway... And lifting his left knee. Anyway, uh, it's hard to explain, but anyway, um, obviously he's looking off to the right in, in the same way that the Battle Dwarf is. Uh, see this bit of his beard here? I thought that was like the left part of his moustache. Maybe you guys can see what I mean, and his hat was sort of on lopsided. Anyway, stupid. Uh, the Battle Dwarf is a pretty good upgrade. It's, it, it's almost you, you have to do the upgrade because you're stuck with a movement 3 unit otherwise for the whole game. He's going to slow down your, um, your, your hero in the adventure map. The Battle Dwarf goes to movement 5, still the HP 20. His magic resistance goes from 20 to 40%, so you just generally... People aren't going to cast spells against you, or if they do, you're quite happy for them too. Battle Dwarf, tier 2 unit, somewhere in here. I don't hate him. I'm, I'm okay to spend money on him, but not really in the early game, which is where you'd want like something like this. In the early game, I so want to spend money on these. These guys, I don't really want to desperately spend money on in the early game. Uh, happy enough to in the mid-game, though. Okay, uh, onto the tower. We're talking about gargoyles and obsidian gargoyles. I think these might be called stone gargoyles. Um, stone gargoyles are really, really good. Uh, they're really, really good. Similar to what we talked about with the sprites, except they, uh, in terms of the maneuverability and option value, they have a really solid profile of HP, attack, and defense as well. Value for money is there. Accessibility is there. It's not very expensive to get these online, to get the sculptor's wings. Uh, really good unit. Um, I think a really solid unit. Happy to have it up here in the B sort of category in terms of value and excitement factor. Where in the B? How happy am I with these? I'll move them along a little bit this way. Obsidian gargoyles. Pretty good. And an upgrade to attack and defense. I don't think that there's a massive value... F um, sorry, reword that. I don't think it's extremely cheap to get the upgrade going. Uh, but in, as far as upgraded second tier units go, these guys are okay. Um, you can get by without upgrading them uh, to obsidians for quite a long time, though. So I think we're going to leave these guys at the bottom of the B. Some of these might leak off the edge of here and need to be pushed down into the C as, as we go. Uh, so we'll see. Moving on to Inferno, and we have Gogs and Magogs. Now, this is a tricky one, right? The, the, the basic Gog is right here in the center of the universe. He's, you need them, right? Inferno really struggles. As you can see here, we've got off to a terrible start with Familiars. 
you need these range units to do something. They have movement four, but they do have a nice beefy body. They can take quite a lot of damage, uh, and they do they do a very good amount of damage relative to uh, their cost. The Magog is a massive uh, problem. When you're playing uh, a resource-constrained version of the game, you can't afford the friendly fire effect of the fireball that comes out with when the Magog attacks. I think there might be some mods that allow you to hold the control button and change where the fireball erupts on the battlefield, which completely changes the analysis. These guys would be up in the C's or B's or whatever in that case. But I find these guys to be pretty much unusable. Um, so it's with great regret I do need to put them down here, just because I really don't want to be using Magogs in the game at all, at, in the early or late or mid, mid or late game, um, because I don't want to have to work around the fireball. Um, it would be different if all the Inferno troops had fire resistance or could resist it the way that... Uh, we'll be talking about Likes later. Uh, they have the Death Cloud, which all of the other undead resist. The fireball will incinerate your imps, <laughs> and for that reason, I just don't use them. Um, so they have to go in the FTS, sadly. In the Necropolis, we have Walking Dead and Zombies. Walking Dead, uh, have basically, they feel a lot like a dwarf. Kind of awful. Worse HP, they can't benefit from morale, they don't have the magic resistance, they aren't particularly cheap relative to the body that you get, they deal quite poor damage. I can't believe I'm still... Yeah, um, the more I talk, the more I want to send them down here. Zombies, you're obliged. You, you're not going to want to walk there with walking dead around for very long. You do need some good meat in your army as a necropolis hero, and whites and wraiths that are coming up next are very, very unexciting, as we'll see. So you're going to want these zombies. So even though it's a zombie, I actually think it's quite high up on my list. Uh, it doesn't deserve to be but it's there because you will find yourself wanting to spend money on it, and the payoff is worth it. The reason being that your other options here are just, you know, mediocre. And as, as we'll see when we talk about whites and wraiths, that, that, that just doubles down on the um, attractiveness of the zombie. Weird word to use, attractiveness, uh, but that's, that's how I feel about zombies. Harpies in the dungeon. A little bit of a tale of two units, again. The basic Harpy, strike and return, movement six, I think it is. Effective, yet not massively exciting. Um, acceptable, an acceptable unit to have in, you know, uh, in, in, in some numbers in the early game. Like we've said before, with, the, with, with similar units we are talking about before, you're going to want to upgrade to the Harpy Hag. She goes up to movement 9, strike and return. Movement 9 and no enemy retaliation. Combo, right? Once again, same thing we were talking about with the sprites. She can strike from 9 hexes away with no retaliation, fly back to safety. Very, very good uh, option value on the battlefield. It is not expensive to upgrade the dwelling. It's a thousand bucks and maybe some sulfur, I think. So this this uh, this unit is really really good, a really really solid A level unit. Maybe just falls short of being an S tier unit because uh, well into the late game uh, they can feel quite soft and squishy, um, you know. But certainly competing for a, a really strong uh, A to A plus, I think the Harpy Hag. Moving now to the stronghold. Uh, and we've got Wolf Riders and Wolf Raiders. A Wolf Rider is basically a goblin that's just more expensive and has a little bit more HP, maybe plus one movement. I was like, they they move way, they have way worse movement than, movement than you expect them to have. I really don't like Wolf Riders. Uh, I don't want to be spending large, large amounts of money on them to be a Wolf Rider. Uh, I will buy Wolf Raiders, but I won't be piling tons of money into these and getting them out on the battlefield as soon as possible and then relying on them well into the late game. They're just not uh, at all an exciting um, investment proposition. Wolf Raiders, on the other hand, do get an impressive nine movement, or maybe it's eight, eight, eight or nine movement, uh, and they go, obviously, improved attack and defense, but they also get two attacks instead of one. Now, that should be awesome, right? You would think, well, hang on, doesn't that, doesn't that gel with what we were talking about before? N the answer is not really. Because when the enemy retaliates, they're very soft and squishy, and they're going to take massive casualties in response to the retaliation. 
unless they're attacking something which is going to die or largely die to the first attack. So the second attack is really, really hard to kind of unlock and leverage and get value out of. If you're attacking something that you're executing, uh, putting out of its misery, the first attack's going to do all the work anyway. The second attack's probably not going to be relevant. If you're attacking something that's huge and beefy, like a big pile of, let's say, dendroids or, or whatever, demons, something big, and you're trying to put a dent in it, well, yeah, you'll put a dent, and then they are going to retaliate, and you're going to take significant casualties before you then swing with your second attack. And, of course, your second attack is weaker because you have fewer raiders uh, following the retaliation. So they promise a lot, but in my opinion, they don't deliver particularly well. So they're acceptable. You're kind of stuck with Stronghold. You've got to do something. The next creature we're going to talk about is the Orc, which you know, isn't insanely great either. Um, but yeah, um, I might just do a little bit of tidying up here to make sure that we're going to have enough room uh, to fit all of our creatures. So I'm just going to do a little jump here and I'll be right back. Okay, where were we up to? Uh, On to the fortress. And we're talking about lizard men and lizard warriors. Lizard men and lizard warriors. The Humble Lizard Man, I think, is a really solid unit. You can get the Lizard's Den pretty cheaply. I think you need wood. Um, yeah, I'm happy for these to be up here. Lizard Warriors are good, but not essential. You don't have to do the Lizard Warrior. Uh, not particularly excited. I'm going to need to promote the zombies, I think. Uh, as We'll talk about it in a, in, a, in a moment. I'm going to just make that slot available. Finally, we have the Conflux at Tier 2. We're talking about Air Elementals and Storm Elementals. So this is the beginning of the Elemental Cycle. There's Air, Water, Fire and Earth between Tier 2 and 5. These, uh, as a group of the four of them, kind of really struggle as a block. Specifically, though, with Air Elementals, Storm Elementals, these are okay. Uh, I found out, actually, in the late, latest run-through, you do have to purchase a mage guild before you can get the altar of air built so if your starting town doesn't already have an altar of air these aren't as accessible um, once you have them they're fine um, they're okay uh, they deal two to eight damage so they love bless as well as a, if you can cast cast bless on them I think though in terms of excitement how excited am I to invest um, it's it's a low C uh, I'm trying to think who I want to demote Maybe it's these guys I want to demote to uh, to D tier to make room for them. I'm not I'm not super excited about an air elemental, but I'll I'll work with it relative to the amount of money you've got to spend. Lightning elementals are a must upgrade. You you, you want to make that upgrade. They go up to movement eight, uh, and their ranged attack is is strong and solid. I actually think they have the same stats as each other, but it's just that it becomes a ranged attack. Um, Similar, you'll want to bless these, you know, if you've got that spell. Uh, works pretty well. Solid unit, happy to invest money in them. Uh, probably towards the higher end of the C category. Uh, I think that, that works okay. So C is starting to fill up, and I'm worried that we're going to have a lot of units we want to just declare as C category. So so we'll have to see uh, whether the C category gets um, oversubscribed. Okay, and we're on to tier 3. I had to just very slightly adjust the screen there. Um... Hopefully that won't uh, move things around too much, though, for you guys. Griffins and Royal Griffins at Tier 3. Yeah, uh, these are good. These are really, really good. A basic Griffin, um, for starters, you have the... I forget the name of it, uh, but it's plus four Griffins a week. The Accelerator building. You don't need a Citadel. You can start piling up on these. They are expensive, but they are awesome on the battlefield. Really, really good. Flying... 25 HP, really hard to kill. Um, two retaliations is is really, really relevant as well sometimes. Yeah, uh, these are a B. I just don't know where in the B. I mean, they're, 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 as, they're as exciting as gargoyles, at least, uh, in terms of value for money. Some Somewhere in this region. The Royal Griffin is a really substantial upgrade, plus two movement, and instead of two retaliations, you get infinite retaliations. So these things can fly over castle walls and really wreak havoc in large numbers. If you've got a big blob of them in the mid-game, it's worth investing that money. Um, 
you're never going to be sad really investing your your wealth in royal griffins even though you are you, you've got marksmen uh, competing for your money uh, I think these are uh, are an A uh, somewhere in the A category. They're an A grade unit. Royal Griffins, very exciting poster child unit of the castle. Um, but even if you can't get to them and you're stuck with these for a while, you're still going to be quite happy. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. A grade for Royal Griffins. Now we move on to the rampart. We're talking about elves and grand elves. So this is a special unit. Um, let's start with the normal elves. The green elves, let's call them. Uh, they're extremely easy to bring online. You pay about f 10 wood and 1500 gold for a homestead. And you get these guys seven a week, I think it is, to start with, or maybe, I, don't, I can't remember. Uh, however many you get, and for the money that you pay, and for the money you pay for the dwelling, these guys are excellent. They deal a really, really solid punch. Uh, very, very happy to invest money in them. If for some reason you're stuck using them and buying them um, without being able to upgrade them, you can be happy. Uh, Elf is a really, really solid unit. But here's the catch. You're not going to want to fight with your elves for very long. You're going to want to upgrade them to the Grand Elf. The Grand Elf has the same feature as the Archer to Marksman upgrade. You get an increased movement and two shots per turn instead of one. These things are absolutely fantastic. It's extremely easy to upgrade the homestead. It's not very expensive. It might be the same cost again. 1500 something like that, in gold. And some wood. Uh, but it's worth... It's wood. You spend the wood. Get these. If you're the Rampart Town, you are getting to these as quickly as possible and getting as many of them as you possibly can. Uh, they're Tier 3. They deal more damage than the Marksman. Uh, and relative to how hard it is to get them online, they are extremely special. Uh, I, I, they're better than Marksman, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know... They're, they're so amazing, I don't know what's going to beat them. There is... We, we've, we've got to make it all the way up to Tier 7, so it'll be interesting to see if we can find units that can compete with them. Uh, I think there will be, actually, at least two or three that will maybe... Be, be pipping for uh, a better, a higher, a higher position on the list than the Grand Elf, but these are awesome. Just a really, really great unit. You can build your entire strategy around Grand Elves uh, if you've got access to enough of them. If you've only, if you're stuck with one homestead, one rampart town in your in your game, they'll just be a very, very nice feature of what you're doing. Um, so, but they're a cut above, absolutely special unit. Um, can't speak highly enough of the Grand Elf. Okay, what's next? Golems and Iron Golems in the Tower Town. Stone Golems are the base unit. Uh, stone Golems are not very exciting, for the same reason as the Dwarf. Movement 3, they're just not that good. The problem is that you will find yourself buying them and using them in quite significant volume. Uh, for reasons that we'll talk about when we get to talk about mages and arch mages. Spoiler alert, it can be difficult to get mages and arch mages online. And as a result, you might find yourself uh, using stone golems to provide the meat if you're a wizard hero and you're casting lots of magic arrows and stuff and you just need something. Um, you will want to get the upgrade pretty quickly, though, because they go from movement 3 to movement 5 when they become an iron golem. And with iron golems, we really are in this... C minus D plus sort of category, better than a harpy, um, more exciting to spend money on than a harpy. It's close. <laughs> I want to cram a whole pile of things into C minus, and I'm not really able to. So uh, we'll put them up in this category for now. They're probably slightly better than what I've got represented here, but excitement value. Yeah, they're extremely relevant though. One thing I'll say about them is they're very relevant right into the late game, which can't be said of every tier three unit. Um, but in terms of urgency ooh, Iron Golems, yes, let's get to Iron Golems quickly yes, I really need to unlock my Iron Golems yeah, no one ever said that okay Inferno we have the Hellhound and Cerberus the Hellhound is solid, he's a good solid unit and thank goodness because Inferno as you can see has really struggled so far you're going to want to get to these and start spending money on them. They're not particularly impactful on the battlefield compared to other tier 3 units, but what you get is decent. You get a decent body, 25 HP I believe, similar, so it's only the Griffin. Movement 7. Actually, they feel, and, they feel and play a lot like a Griffin, but they can't fly and they don't have the extra retaliations. Good solid unit. 
One other thing they also have, similar to the Griffin, oh, I can't believe how similar these are, uh, is the accelerator building. You can get an extra four, I think it is, might be the cages, something like that, that gives you uh, an upgrade to the kennel, or gives you extra uh, hellhounds. Cerberus is a fantastic upgrade. Oh man, these, these have a similar story to the Griffins. These are even better, though, than Royal Griffins, in my opinion, because we have the combo. Just like this unit, just like that unit. No enemy retaliation. In addition, the Cerberus has three attacks, uh, and it attacks all three hexes in front of it. Without friendly fire, I'm nearly certain. If you have a friend in one of those hexes, the Hellhounds, uh, so, so the Cerberus will leave it alone, but it will attack um, all of the enemies that, that are in the three hexes in front of it. So this is, uh, in my opinion, an A-grade unit, the Cerberus, especially in the context of the Inferno. Contextually speaking, contextually speaking, this is where you want to spend your money uh, in the Inferno as quickly as you reasonably can. And for that reason, uh, these are a really solid uh, A-grade unit. Where am I putting these? Are they better than Harpy Hags? Yeah. I'm going to be brave and put them up here. Right. How do I say this? Whites and Wraiths. Whites and Wraiths. The white is exceptionally unexciting. Um, how do I feel about a white? I mean, I do not want to spend money on a white. Movement 5. They die. They've got like HP 18. You can't buy large amounts of them in... You know, they don't have the Accelerator Dwelling. They Their wounds heal at the start of the turn, but that ability is kind of useless on a unit that doesn't have very much HP anyway. Healing your wound of your top unit would look better on a Tier 6 unit, like a, let's say, a Cyclops or a Manticore or Naga or something, a Unicorn or something like that. That ability on this particular unit is just not exciting. These guys are right down in the doldrums for me. Are they F? Are they my most hated unit? Surely not. I hate this more. Um, they're not unusable. This are they hated more than a Walking Dead? Yes, I don't like them. I, I, I don't like them. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want them to be anywhere high at all. So this is they're, they're down here in the low E's. I'm not excited to spend money on a white. Probably spent long enough talking about it. The Wraith is a pretty good upgrade. It goes to. I think movement 7, and it gets the mana drain ability. As I figured out in my last run through, it doesn't give you the mana, it just drains the enemy's mana. But maybe it drains more of it, as opposed to what this thing does over here. Um, how eager am I to go for it with wraiths? Not very. D? Minus? Um, part of the reason is their overall absolute power level, but also we've got vampires and likes coming up, which are both very good. Um... I don't want to upgrade this and start buying these instead of getting my vampires online. So, but they are much more useful on the battlefield than these things. So a D minus, maybe an E plus uh, for the for the wraith in terms of how exciting. Um, so yeah, old Necropolis gets off to a bad start, but things do get a lot better uh, over the next three levels. Okay, we're onto the dungeon level three. These are beholders and evil eyes. I love the artwork of these. Really, really cool. He's got these little teeth underneath. Um, terrifying, nightmarish creatures. And excellent on the battlefield. Uh, beholders, you can get them at a relatively uh, cheap cost to build the Pillar of Eyes, I think it is. Um, yeah, no melee uh, penalty when they do get uh, attacked in melee. They can walk around your backline if they are engaged and attack someone else and be really relevant. Really solid unit. Um, happy to invest good amounts of money in these in these bad boys. Uh, so yeah, B. Evil Eyes, is it worth the upgrade? They don't change much. They're, they're much the same, but the upgrade is fairly cheap. So I think maybe they belong as a pair. Are they better than a griffin or a gargoyle in terms of excitement value? I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe they're in here, in this region, and we need to move these guys this way a little bit. Uh, just massage this around a little bit. 
solid solid unit the evil eye and beholder okay orcs and orc chieftains I believe it is um, I don't like orcs I think the I think from a design perspective the whole gimmick with orcs is that they are tough they're hard to kill and they have range and there's not many units in the game that have that that are, that are a ranged unit and are hard to kill here's the thing the spells of the game and the way that the stronghold works mean that it's hard to get the best leverage of that combination of abilities. They're also movement four um, for a level... I think they're movement four. For a level three unit is slow. Um, okay, maybe you're saying, okay, I don't need speed because I'm a ranged unit, but you kind of do. It matters. Um, I'm not super excited to invest in these. Having said that, there can be times where, you know, if you've got an external dwelling, uh, the orc tower... Uh, and you want to pile up and get lots and lots of orcs going, okay, maybe it's a thing. Um, but I'm not excited to get these online quickly. Uh, they're not E and they're not F, but they're not great. Upgrading them to chieftains just always seems like such a low priority. It's something I just don't do uh, urgently. I'd much rather start investing in my ogres and and whatever, something else. Um, but they are, they are a decent upgrade, having said that. Um, they're a decent. They are a decent upgrade. Having said that, I'll maybe promote them to D tier. Orcs and orc chieftains. So as you can see, already we can see the effects of the first three levels. Some towns start better than others. <laughs> okay, right. Some towns really start better than others. So I'm looking at the castle here. You know, uh, looking at the fortress is another town that starts starts really solidly uh, and then certain towns like the Inferno um, you know where the Necropolis where things are stronghold things aren't aren't too hot um, in the fortress tier 3 is really really great uh, serpent flies are very very good and um, yeah the movement they dispel any spell as well so that did I did mean for that to rhyme uh, a solid B, B, B unit, are they, are they an A? They're a very, very high B if they're not an A. Uh, you can get by with these without upgrading them for a while. Um, amazingly high uh, movement. Movement 9? Um, awesome. Awesome unit. Much more HP than you expect for a dragonfly as well. You th you'd think that they die like flies, to use that expression, but they don't. They don't die like flies. They're, they're resilient. The dragonfly is incredible. It is fantastic. Uh, huge movement, can cover the screen in one go, uh, casts weakness on anything they attack, and dispels whatever else they had going on. So these are special. I, I actually think they are special. To have a tier three, to have all of that at tier three, really, really, really good. Somewhere underneath these other special units, uh, but the Dragonfly is awesome, and I'm happy to spend lots and lots of money uh, on uh, on Dragonflies. I'm going to promote the Serpentfly uh, as well. Um, A minus. Dragonflies, though, special. Special unit. Water and Ice Elementals down at the Conflux. Uh, these are t I found these in my last run through to be really expensive. Extremely powerful on the battlefield, the Ice Elementals. I think what happened is I had an Altar of Water outside the Conflux, so that's why I piled into them. But a basic Water Elemental, without any other reason to buy them or go into them, even if you have got an Altar of Water nearby, she was not. Ex th these were not exciting for very long. You're not going to want to play with these uh, for very long, if you can help it. Um, water Elementals, D-. minus. Maybe an E. We'll come back, maybe. The Ice Elemental, definitely worth the upgrade. Um, the cost of upgrading the altar was not high, and then the performance on the battlefield is way better. So similar to the Air and Lightning uh, Elemental story. Um, how excited am I to spend tons of money on them? Not very. Maybe put them here. Um, I might promote the sprites, actually, and push her down to there. She's just okay, um, I found. 
in large numbers relative to the amount of money that you have to invest. And that is the end of tier three, and we're nearly at the halfway mark. Going well. Uh, right, on to tier four. Back to the castle. And we're talking about swordsmen and crusaders. Here's the thing with swordsmen. I love these and these, and as a result I don't have a lot of money left over. It often takes me ages to get the swordsman dwelling built, and then once I have built it I just let them build up and I don't buy them, I don't use them. So for that reason these guys are actually quite low uh, on the excitement scale, on the Richter scale of excitement as we'll call uh, what we're doing here. Crusaders on the other hand are really really, oh that was my dog, good. Um, Crusaders are, gr are great actually. They have the same ability as the uh, Wolf Raiders. They attack, get retaliated against, and then attack again. The difference is that they have 35 HP. All right, they can take a punt, they can take a beating, and then deliver their second attack. Uh, and you can be kind of okay with it, especially if it's a close fight where you know you do have to take casualties. You can throw these guys into the fray, swing, take retaliation, swing again. If they get a morale flash, it's quite easy to get uh, with leadership in the castle hero, uh, if, you, if you have knights as, as your heroes, it's quite possible to get a second attack with these. And if you've already softened up a target, getting to swing twice more uh, is combo town. It feels amazing when, when you pull that off. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to invest in these. The problem is you need crystal, I think, to get them online. They're not cheap to get online. So where should they go? Maybe they can take this slot here. Uh, for now, um, somewhere in the middle of the sea. Oh, maybe they're a high sea. Say that they're a high sea. I think that's okay for Crusaders. Maybe I'm being a bit hard on them. But again, like similar for similar reasons we talked before, you might not have the dwelling online for a while, uh, and you might not up have the upgraded dwelling uh, done for a while uh, in, in the same way that you would be sort of beelining your way towards certain other tier 4 creatures that will come to. Uh, in just a few moments. Uh, right, let's move on then to the Rampart. Pegasus and Silver Pegasus. A normal Pegasus is garbage. Terrible value for money. Uh, they die too easily. They take up two hexes. They're kind of clunky. They don't really synergize with what the elves are doing, uh, what the centaurs are doing. Not really. I don't need a unit that flies around with seven moves. It's, it's basically a really poor version of a gri of this. Okay, so I think it might even have the same HP, except it's tier 4. So imagine this, but at tier 4, and with the, without the second retaliation. Where would you put it? It's going to drop down the order, right? That's basically what a, what, what a Pegasus is. Silver Pegasi are better. Movement 12 uh, can be relevant in the late game quite a, a lot to have uh, an additional unit that has really fast moves in addition to your dragons and stuff. How excited am I to get the upgrade? Uh, the, the upgrade is expensive. And for that reason, I'm not super excited about Silver Pegasi. Uh, I don't rush them. I'm, they're not a high priority for me when I'm playing Rampart. Um, that all is okay, because Rampart already has the most special unit in the game so far. It's okay for these to be not as good, I think. It's all right. Look, if, you, if you're buying Silver Pegasi in large numbers in the mid-game, you're not going to be sad. But it's not something you especially aspire to. You don't really want to waste time a big chunk of the game with loads and loads of these unupgraded, I don't think. That's my opinion. Okay, moving now to Tower. We're talking about Magi, Mages, and Arch Mages. Now, here's the thing. When you're starting the game from a zero start point with no resources at all, no free crystal, no free gems, no free anything. These are a nightmare. Uh, it can be... You can you can be ready to build the tower, the mage's tower, but not have... You might still be on zero sulfur or something. In order to get the mage's tower, you need every resource. And if you're starting on zero, 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 that can be really hard. It's It can be just one particular resource that you're still missing, but it's impossible to get. In order to get it, you need to go to your marketplace, but you'll be getting terrible prices because you have only one marketplace. Uh, and yeah, so unlocking these is really, really hard. On the battlefield, they're great, sure. Yeah, 25 HP, no uh, no melee penalty, and they deal massive damage. 
wonderful, but I can't build the tower. And the problem is with the tower town. You need this dwelling in order to unlock anything else in the game. You can't get uh, the genies, the nagas, or the titans, the giants, or any of that without the mage's tower. So these guys get a bad score. And I might get some hatred for this in the comments. I don't know if, if anyone's going to bother commenting, but if you do, um, because of the clunk. Yes, they're extremely powerful. They belong up here in terms of power level, but accessibility, excitement factor. Oh, great. I'm going to get to, you know, start a game as a tower. I can't wait to get my mages online. I just don't think that because it's like I'm dreading having to get all the resources together to try to find a way to um, unlock them. So they're down here. They're down here. In the context of playing a resourceless start, they're down here, in my opinion. Moving on, we have Demons and Horned Demons in the Inferno. Demon is an exceptionally boring creature. HP is 35, I think, and movement is just okay. Um, they're not particularly expensive, and they're not hard to get online in terms of the cheapness of the other dwellings and everything you need. The prerequisite to get a demon is... Not very much relative to some of the other tier fours, I think. And it, it feels that way anyway. Maybe that's just because I haven't bought the Magogs. Um, and the fact that these stink down here prom naturally tends to promote the stuff that doesn't stink. And it's a, it's a point about making about the zombies as well. Uh, so demons have sort of zombie fever. You're going to want to use... You're going to be happy enough to use them and whatever, but they're not massively exciting. Um, I can't have them ab above a Crusader, just... Because the Crusader's, the Crusader's such a flavorful unit, uh, so I feel bad having him this far down. Anyway, Demon's just okay. If you've invested in them, you'll be not terribly sad, but you don't want to be stuck with them for a long time. I actually think they, they're not, they're, they don't deserve that spot. I am going to just rejig the um, layout here. As for Horn Demons, these are solid for the money, um, a decent upgrade. Yeah, you're not going to be super sad about a Horned Demon if you've made that investment to upgrade them. Uh, they are more powerful than Demons. Do I want to make this upgrade very badly? Not really. So I think I have a unit that kind of is... We're going to overload this C-minus area a little bit uh, and see if I can just overlay... Okay. Yeah, because I feel like C-minus is a, a region that... <laughs> there's going to be a few uh, units that want to find their way down there. I think the Demon, the basic Demon, is actually beats the upgraded one in terms of value for money and accessibility. Okay, we are exactly, by my reckoning, halfway. Um, vampires and Vampire Lords. Wow, okay, yeah, so the Vampire is really good just as a Vampire. Um, the Dwelling is pretty easy to get online. You get Movement 6, which isn't amazing, but then uh, no Retaliation. Okay, which really matters, as we've said. Uh, this is a solid unit. Um, you know, I'm happy to be flying around with vampires for a while. It can be the case that you're stuck with them and not able to upgrade them for a while uh, because it's quite an expensive upgrade. Uh, but yeah, no retaliation uh, and in large numbers in the early game, quite useful. If you're stuck with them in the mid game, you're sad because you really do want to upgrade them. Uh, which brings me to Vampire Lords. Uh, the, this came up in my last run through. They, these guys are just unbelievable. They're so, so good. Um, in large numbers. Firstly, they have the combo, right? They have the same combo that these three units have, and they're in this region just as a starting point for that reason. However, in addition, the Vampire Lords regenerate, so when they attack, however much damage they deal gets rejuvenated, they heal uh, that many uh, Vampire Lords. Now, in the late game... If you've got enough of these and you've got a big stack of them, the fight can be unwinnable for the opponent because these things just fly around the battlefield mopping everything up. And if they take damage, even if they take massive lightning bolt damage, uh, they can just feed their way back to a high stack. They're a nightmare to deal with. Now, here's the catch. They're hard to get online. So that softens them slightly. Uh, normally, they'd be right up there with Grand Elves. Uh, I'm kind of torn between... A and S, I think they do have to be S just because of what's possible in the late game. The absurd things you can do in the late game with these guys uh, and the sheer terror they strike into the hearts of uh, any who oppose them. But I can't put them way up here because of the fact that they aren't very accessible. 
compared to these other special units. I think I'm happy with that. Again, controversy. Uh, there'll be a lot of love, a lot of love out there for vampire lords. If anyone who's watching this, I'm sure. Okay, Medusas and Medusa queens are next. They're in the dungeon. Ah, uh, the Medusa is. I'm never that excited by these. I find them to be really expensive relative to how good they are. You don't get many. It kind of feels like just a worse version of the Beholder. It does the same job on the battlefield. It sits there and then can do melee with no penalty. I find that by the time you've spent 10 grand on Medusas, they deal, the, however many that buys, deals about as much damage as, as 10 grand's worth of Beholders deals. And these are tier four, so I, I need more. I expect more and want more. Petrifying uh, your opponent in melee is kind of good, actually. Um, but it only comes up when they retaliate and they're being set upon by something. Uh, it would, again, be different, similar to the Mag Magog thing. In the vanilla game, it would be different if you could choose to walk up and paralyze, petrify uh, what, something. But because you can't choose, you've got to shoot if you can shoot, uh, these, these just have to kind of... Uh, yeah. muddle along. Okay, they're not terrible, they're not F, but they're not they're not as good as these sort of stock units in my opinion in terms of excitement factor. The Medusa Queens, similar story, um, obviously better, but you've got to invest, and I don't really want to invest. So, I don't really want to make the investment to get them that badly. Uh, they, do hit, they do hit pretty hard though, a Medusa Queen. So maybe the Queen is a little bit better than the Medusa, the normal one. I'm screwing my face up more than I really should because I know I can I, I can see myself in the um, in my second screen here. I'm being pessimistic. They're they're fine, but I'm not excited about them. Okay, ogres and ogre magi. Ogres and ogre magi. A basic ogre is a tank, an absolute tank. Happy to go for these quickly and to not spend very much money on orcs. Um, good solid unit. Happy to spend money on them. Uh, well into the uh, late part of the mid game, I do want to upgrade them quickly though. Um, Ogre Magi have sixty HP at tier four. They can cast Bloodlust on something if you've only got a small stack of them. But if you've got a big stack of them, these things are absolute houses. Huge HP for tier four. Uh, extremely scary to fight against in large numbers. Uh, a really, really good, good unit. One I'm happy to spend the money on. They're hard to unlock. I think you need... I'm trying to remember what it is. I think it's gems you need. So they have a similar thing going as to what the Vampire Lords have. Not as great as these, but but great. Uh, but because of the resource constraint there, not quite an A-level unit, uh, in my opinion. Right, who's next? We have Basilisks in the Fortress and Greater Basilisks. I like a Basilisk. I, I like the basilisk. It's good. It's 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 solid. Uh, happy to spend money on this unit. Um, am I really super excited? Can't wait to get my basilisks. No, not really. They're probably somewhere in this vicinity here. Probably somewhere in this vicinity of a decent C. Greater basilisks, on the other hand, can I be bothered? Right, you do get a good movement upgrade, good power level upgrade. If I have an external dwelling of basilisks, whatever the basilisk pit is, and I'm buying lots of basilisks, sure, let's upgrade, let's get excited about them. But without that, I'm not super excited. Um, hoping the graphic will still turn out okay and that we can see what's behind here. Let's keep moving. Fire and energy elementals. Fire elementals are really, really bad. Um, uh, value for money. I think they do uh, a significantly more damage than a water elemental. So I think I'm happy to be a bit more excited about them. You can skip water elementals and go straight to fire uh, if you want. So for that reason, I'll maybe promote them above the water elemental. Uh, and that's a good good way to scale and figure out the order of events. But fire elementals at tier four, compared to some of the other stuff that you can get instead. Uh, well, I shouldn't click that. I guess I should click this ogre here or this basilisk. Um, just not that great. Um, relative to the expense. Energy elementals, actually not bad. Actually not bad. Um, I'd be happy to use this unit well into the late game, get it online relatively quickly if I can. Um, so I'll put that in the B category. 
um, B minus for a uh, for an energy elemental. Um, maybe I should explain a bit about why that is. The reason is you get plus two movement, I think it is. Maybe it is plus one, plus two, I think. And flying, and yeah, good HP, and they can fly over the castle walls and help the phoenixes um, and, and whatnot. Um, kind of similar to a silver pegasus, but a little bit more affordable and. Um, in the context of your other choices in the conflux, you know, a, a, a decent uh, a decent choice. So that's tier four, and we're on to tier tier five, back to the castle again, and we're talking about monks and zealots. I don't like these. I don't use these really. Uh, I have to build the dwelling. It's not massively expensive to get the dwelling, but the guys themselves come in pretty small numbers, and they don't pack a massive wallop on the battlefield. Uh, I think the Zealots have no melee penalty. I can't remember if the Monks do, but it doesn't matter for long for me very often. Um, I don't find these exciting, and I'm putting them down here. Um, I'm putting them in the D category. D minus? Do I want to give them a D minus? They're better for me than these two units, so I'm moving them over there, and I'm moving these guys into here. Unexciting members of the mid-range part of the castle town. These three guys together. A little bit of a blip. Crusaders can get a bit more excited about these guys. Nah, yeah, not really. Okay, uh, so uh, so I've just put some boxes around these to just help make them stand out and uh, hopefully that's easier on the eye. We are cramming a heck of a lot of uh, creatures onto our uh, canvas here, so just trying to just trying to figure out the best way to, uh, to make it appear visually um, acceptable. Okay, so we've done tier 5 for the castle. Moving on to tier 5 for the rampart, we have dendroid guards and dendroid soldiers. Um, the guard is... Not, uh, movement 3 for a tier 5 unit is woeful. But these things are houses, obviously. Uh, huge HP. And they also have the accelerator building, the dendroid archers, dendroid saplings. Uh, that give you an extra three a week. It might be, I think it's only two a week actually extra you get, but it's we're talking about tier five. So for that reason, dendroid guards are great, but you don't want to be stuck with them for long. Uh, kind of similar to the dwarves, I want to upgrade them quickly so I can get the extra movement. And then these guys, the dendroid soldiers, are by contrast quite solid. I'm happy to pour quite a lot of uh, money into these at the expense of these uh, Pegasi. Skip them, get the dwelling, and move on quickly to soldiers. That's normally going to be my recipe for success as the as a rampart. So a solid B for the dendroid soldier. Uh, and I'm actually going to swap the evil eye out. Um, because I think, if I'm honest, I don't build evil eyes as often as this represents. I don't do the upgrade as often. And dendroid soldiers are a really, really worthy unit that deserve a, a spot up here somewhere. Uh, absolute nightmare once they get into base contact. Uh, with whoever's unfortunate enough to be fighting them. In the tower at tier 5 we have the genie and master genie. I think these are garbage. Uh, I hate the genie. I, it never does enough for me. It doesn't. It's basically like a vampire. It has the same stat line I think nearly as a normal vampire. The normal vampire is tier 4. This guy is just... and he's so hard to get. Like by the time I've gone through the rigmarole of getting all the resources I need to build these two guys my prize is that I get to unlock, drumroll, genies? Dream genie. Gene genie. Lives on his back. Um, and he lives in the E tier for me. I don't like them. Uh, I don't ever spend money on them unless I, I don't have anything better to do. Master genies, significant speed upgrade. Uh, if you haven't got many of them, you can use them to cast a friendly spell, kind of like the Blood uh, Mage. No, what am I calling it? Um, <laughs> Ogre Mage. The Ogre Mage casts Bloodlust, whereas this guy casts a beneficial spell. It could be Haste, it could be Bless, that kind of thing. Um, Master Genies, yeah, okay. Um, I'll go for them if I don't have much... They're sort of in this category for here, D, D minus, D-ish... Um, I don't want to... If I am stuck with genies, I will upgrade and get to them quickly. I don't want to be stuck with these basic ones. Um, just a D. Are they better than these? 
in terms of excitement, accessibility. Yeah, they're in, they're in this category somewhere. I, I don't know exactly where. Um, I might move them to here, actually. Okay, tier five in the Inferno. Dun, dun, dun. Pit Fiends and Pit Lords. Um, yeah, both decent. Uh, and in terms of the value for money, getting these guys up quickly is kind of important. Uh, so they're kind of in this category alongside their demon buddies, probably about here somewhere. Um, a Pit Lord is quite good. Uh, you get to resurrect demons from fallen comrades, which can be good if you are... If you have gone heavy on imps and you've got... You can engineer your strategy around them. Um, just trying to think where I want to put the Pit Lord. It's not a B unit, though. I think it's probably a C. Uh, so we'll give it a C. Uh, and we'll just reformat these now. What's next? We have... Likes. I'm going to call them likes. Some call them. Some people call them liches. Uh, I'm going to call them likes and arc, arc likes. Okay, I guess I'll call them arc liches. How about that? What did I call these things? Arch mages. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Arc or arch. Maybe someone can tell me uh, what the correct uh, way of saying this is. Arc liches and like like liches. These guys are very good. Mausoleum, I think it's called. It's not particularly expensive to get online. These are really, really solid. Happy to make the upgrade, worth the money for the upgrade. You get more damage, uh, more movement and stuff like that. Um, so they act a little bit sooner in the turn. Um, these guys are really, really solid. Are they A tier? Maybe they're A tier, actually. I think maybe the basic one is A tier. Uh... In terms of, yeah, get this get this thing built, get these things on. I want them. I'm excited about it. Yes, yes, yes. These can wait a little bit if they have to. Uh, upgrading them can come later. I can circle back to the town. It's not essential. Uh, they're, they're not, there's not much difference between them. It's not an expensive upgrade. So they're quite close in ranking, but I think these do deserve um, an A rating. Okay. Let's move on. Minotaurs and Minotaur Kings. Uh, in the dungeon. Now, these guys are solid. Really, really good. Uh, welcome relief after the disappointment of the Medusas. Uh, basic Minotaur, I don't want to be stuck with for too long. Um, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. Um, maybe top of C. Uh, walking around with Minotaurs. You don't want to be doing it for too long because it's worth going for kings. The king, both types have this always positive morale rule, which can come in very handy. But they just have great stats. They deal great damage, great HP. Um, yeah, Minotaur King, I think, could be an A-grade unit as well. Ah, oh, he'd be strong. Uh, just very tippy-top of the B, I think, uh, for the Minotaur King. Happy with that. Next we have uh, the Stronghold. We're off to visit the Rocks and uh, Thunderbirds. These are great. These are really, really good. Rocks are great on their own. Really, really solid unit. You can be happy buying lots of them, running around the map, uh, doing things with them. Uh, I think these are A. These are A-tier A, A units, and they're not even upgraded. Um, the two hexes of body can sometimes be a liability, and the movement isn't amazing, but they deal massive damage, and their HP is spectacular. Uh, really, really hard to kill. Thunderbirds, meanwhile, have... A spectacular moves. Is it moves 11? I, I Sometimes I over-remember the moves. I'm not looking... I don't have all the wiki up here with me. I probably should, by the way. These things are great. They have massive moves. Light, they cast Lightning Bolt. I think it's one time in 10 whenever they attack. Uh, they're really hard to kill. Um, do massive damage. Great, great unit. You can be really happy piling into these. I think upgrading the dwelling is not cheap. It's not the cheapest upgrade in the world. But these things deserve a spot in the A tier as well. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where. Um, it's in this region, towards towards the A minus. I don't know where exactly. Uh, but yeah, really, really solid. Thunderbirds are go. Thunderbirds are go. For me. Okay, Fortress. Gorgons and Mighty Gorgons. We'll start putting things in the F tier to start with. Um, 
Right, a Gorgon, a basic Gorgon, extremely tough, hard to kill. They'll tend to have very high defense, um, really great HP, slow as a wet week, takes up two hexes. Yeah, I'm not massively keen to spend tons of money on these. Solid D, um, just okay. They're in the just okay bucket. Um, Mighty Gorgons, we'll put them here for now, they're heading into the D category. Mighty Gorgons, really special unit, really interesting unit. You get, obviously, an upgrade to moves and a little bit more attack. Death Stare uh, is a really relevant ability and kind of essential for the Fortress because they only have Hydras at Tier 7. Uh, I say only, but Hydras are okay, but they obviously struggle for moves, as we'll come to. Mighty Gorgons can take on anything. Gold Dragons, Titans, de Devils, uh, Behemoths, you name it. And the reason is that the Death Stare ability is, is really, really powerful. You do need quite a big stack of them, though, for it to work. In addition to that, getting them online is expensive. You have to build the resource silo first, and that costs five grand before you can then build the upgraded dwelling. So it's kind of... The, these two units aren't really close relatives of one another, I don't think, because so much separates them in terms of power level and investment. Um, how excited am I about Mighty Gorgons and getting money in there. I'm very excited about getting them on the battlefield. How excited am I to spend the money? B minus? Something like that. Okay, another quick edit there. I've made the foreground guys a little bit smaller, so you can still see the background guys a bit better. Um, okay, we're nearly finished tier 5 now. Uh, so, tier 5 in the Conflux is the Earth and Magma Elementals, uh, I had an Earth Elemental dwelling outside my Conflux in the last game. Um, really unexciting. I mean, woeful. So, so, like, movement four? Uh, you would think, okay, well, all right, tier five, movement four, if you hit really hard, isn't that like a dendroid? Yeah, but they don't hit as hard, they don't have the bind root binding ability. Um... I just find them to be really kind of garbage, honestly. Um, I'm as excited to build the upgrade... I'm about as excited to build the Magma and Elemental upgrade as I am to... I'm not excited to do it. Uh, I, I don't think I'm ever going to do it. I don't think I'm ever going to play a game where I do bother with this upgrade or bother buying these. They might be F. I think Magma might be F. I think these guys are a bad E. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like them at all. Are they are they very bottom of the F? I don't want to do this. I don't want to buy them. I'm not excited about building the dwelling. I don't want to buy them and use them on the battlefield. I'm going to find something else to do. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is how I feel about them, and this, that's why they are where they are. I've got to be honest with myself. And like, Okay, I might be wrong. You guys might disagree. I don't think you'll disagree. I don't think you'll disagree. Right, moving on to tier 6. And we have Cavaliers and Champions. Now, I'm not a big fan. Cavaliers are alright, uh, but quite expensive to get the uh, Jousting Ring dwelling online. And they do not move anywhere near as far as you would hope or think that they move. Um, amazing HP is one thing I'll say. Not excited though. I'm not super super excited to uh, to get these to get these going. Uh, I think I'm less excited than I am about these guys over here. Um, he's ducking behind my camera. If I do that, uh, I'm not. Sorry, I don't mean to say I'm less excited than an Earth Elemental. That would be mathematically impossible. I'm heading towards low D. Uh, for the for these guys. So I'll just put them there for a moment. That'll look a bit funny until I fix it. Champions, on the other hand, are really good. And you don't want to stick around with these for very long before uh, upgrading to champions. Um, that said, how eager am I to get my champions built? They have movement 9, 10 over grass. Uh, they're just okay, I guess. D? Solid D? I, I, I'm not desperately trying to get them. Um, over the other things I could be doing with my money at that stage of the game. Uh, so Castle kind of drops off in the in, in that mid sort of mid to late uh, era. Uh, so just tweak the formatting there. Hopefully that looks good. 
um, crisp enough. Hopefully, if you're watching on a tiny mobile device, my apologies if things are getting a bit crazy, but we're actually doing well. We're well past the two-thirds mark now, I think. Uh, let's talk about unicorns and war unicorns, shall we? I love the unicorn. I really like unicorns. Really, really good unit. Uh, you don't have to upgrade them to war unicorns if you don't want to. Uh, they still have huge HP. They still have a blinding attack. Uh, movement 7. The kind of thing with Rampart that happens is you want to sort of dominate the middle of the battlefield. You want to walk out with your dendroid soldiers and kind of make have this mass of bodies in the middle of the pitch while your elves work them over from, from uh, close range. And unicorns do a really, really good job of that. They just feel good. The two hexes is really useful as well for body blocking uh, the elves, and that comes up quite a lot, uh, as opposed to the Pegasus, uh, which is not a good choice. Like, fast cavalry is not a great choice to pair with um, what the elves and dwarves and dendroids, uh, you know, are kind of trying to com combine together to do. The unicorn fits into that strategy, I think, a lot better. So uh, I like the unicorn. I'm willing to spend quite a lot of money uh, and resources and forego other things in order to get it. How excited? Is it an A? Yes. If it's not an A, it's a high B. Um, I think it's just a high B. Just a high B for now. I'll fix the formatting in a minute. War Unicorns, is it worth the upgrade? Yes. Uh, I'm not as excited, though. So, um, kind of a middle B for the War Unicorn. The formatting tweak. Uh, moving on to the tower, we're talking about Nagas and Naga Queens. These are good. Uh, the Naga hits very hard, no enemy retaliation, insane HP, hard to kill, uh, reasonably affordable in terms of the dwelling. Downside of the Naga, movement 5 for a tier 6 unit is pretty bad. Uh, and I minded to give her a low C for that reason. Well, no, I'll give her a high C. C plus. C plus-ish for the Naga, for the basic Naga. The Naga Queen is a really good upgrade. You get movement 7, I think it is. And she goes from dealing 20 damage to dealing 30 damage, a 50% upgrade in damage. Really nasty unit, like really terrifying in large numbers. Kind of feels like you're fighting a tier 7 unit sometimes. Um, I'm happy to give her an A, but not a high A, um, an, an A minus. She's a really, really solid, uh, solid unit. So I'll just fix the formatting here. Very, very good units here at tier six for the Inferno. We have the Efreet and Efreet Sultan. Um, yeah, and okay, <laughs> cousin of the genie, cousin of the master genie, but substantially better, I must say. Uh, HP 90, really, really good. Huge movement with flying. Uh, solid, solid unit uh, as a basic Efreet. Uh, so, where is he? He's probably in the high B uh, ranking, I would say. The Efreet Sultan is worth the upgrade, um, but not particularly more impressive or happiness uh, inducing, I would say, than a basic Efreet after you've spent the money. I do quite like the Fire Shield, but if he's getting attacked tons and the Fire Shield is going off a lot, you're not really happy with that. You want to use your nice fast units for swooping in, alpha striking, and not taking too much damage in return. Uh, so, but still, nonetheless, fire shield really, really good as well. Uh, I think these are both 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 deserve a solid B. Okay, so getting a pretty good collection going here. Moving on to the Necropolis, we have the Black Knight and the Dread Knight. Uh, these guys are very, very good. Um, where do they belong? Hmm. So, similar kind of vibes the Black Knight has to the Naga and the Unicorn. Instead of Blind, it's Curse that these, uh, that these things can do. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think I can give the Unicorn this score without also giving something similar to the Black Knight. Um, because the rest of the Necropolis's creatures up to this point haven't been amazing, he's probably that much more attractive. Can sneak in maybe to the A- minus oh, for a basic Black Knight. Um, I think for a basic Black Knight I might come back here to, to the B uh, category just because of the likes and the Vampire Lords how excited am I? Oh yeah, Black Knights I am quite excited. Oh, I'm torn Let me come back to him for a second 
Dread Knights are great and worth the upgrade. You get double damage. In large numbers, they're an absolute nightmare, similar to these. And I'm happy to move them in to uh, the A category. Uh, oops, that didn't work. Hang on a moment. Um, yes, let's move, make some room here. Get the Dread Knights up here. Uh, get them up here. They're good. Just reshuffle these guys back along a little bit. As for the Black Knight, I'm not as excited about the Black Knight. Um, because this upgrade is a... Oh yeah, let's do this upgrade. It's an expensive upgrade, but you get an amazing unit. Um, just with Curse, just with Movement 7. Not as great. Uh, I think, yeah, we need to come down here into the B category. Okay, with, what are these guys? Manticores, Scorpicores. I don't love these. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of either. Value for money just isn't really there. Poor movement for the Manticore. Um, they're not, they don't have the health of, say, a Naga or a Black Knight. Um, and yeah, synergy with your archery units in the dungeon, synergy with the Harpy Hags flying over from a distance, not really there either. Um, so in terms of bang for buck, value for money, not an exciting unit. Uh, I think the Scorpicore upgrade is quite expensive and even less attractive than the basic Manticore. We're kind of in this D sort of area for me. Um, what am I going to say for these guys? I think I have to put them both in that D category. Okay, so moving on to the Stronghold, we have Cyclops and Cyclops Kings. Uh, these are good. These are solid. Um, I don't desperately want to upgrade them that much uh, relative to the cost of doing so. So I think I like the basic one better. Um, C and... C minus, respectively, for the Cyclops and Cyclops King. Not a great deal to say about them. Suffer from the same thing that the Orcs do in that a lot of their value is in their high toughness, which I'm trying to shoot from a distance. Doesn't come up that often. Um, okay, they're harder to kill with spells, lightning bolts, and whatever. Uh, but that's that's what's giving me the rationale, really, for not being hugely excited. But I am happy to spend my money on these guys. Okay, Fortress. Wyverns and Wyvern Monarchs. This is a really interesting creature. Really, really interesting. Um, Wyverns have this weird thing where you can build a Wyvern nest for, like, 3,500 gold and some wood very early on, like you only need the Serpent Fly Hive, you only need the Tier 3, you can skip, I think, I think I'm right about this, you can skip Basilisk, you can skip Gorgons, go straight to Wyverns. So it's kind of like you get access to this amazing unit way, way earlier in the game than you would normally. So for example, Nagas, how hard it is to get to Nagas because of the problem that we talked about earlier with uh, the Mage uh, Tower, is the opposite here with the Fortress, and you can uh, you can start collecting Wyverns. On top of that, uh, there's tons of wyverns out on the adventure map. You can go to... There's all these trees with serpent fly hive locations where if you beat the serpent flies, that your reward is wyverns. Uh, in addition to that, I'm nearly sure I've opened a Pandora's box and been given wyverns. So they keep showing up everywhere as prizes and things, and you can get a big stockpile of them. Uh, so these units are absolutely incredible relative to the value. Now, on the battlefield, are they the most powerful tier 6 unit in the game. Far from it. In fact, they might be the weakest. They have 70 HP instead of, like, you know, the Black Knight has 110, I think, or the Naga has 100, 110. So the Wyvern on the battlefield one-on-one -on -one is the worst, or one of the worst tier 6 creatures, but its accessibility is fantastic. Its value for money, how much value do I have to forego elsewhere to get these online, is very, very low. For that reason, in my opinion, the normal Wyvern deserves a place in S-tier. It's a really special unit, and you can be happy beelining them and going straight for Wyverns um, from Serpent Flies in your Fortress Town. Um, the upgrade to Wyvern Monarchs is expensive. Uh, they get a much better movement profile and they get the Poisoning Attack, which is really strong. Um, they aren't special. Uh, I don't know if they're A tier. I don't think they are, actually, in terms of... Because often you won't bother. You'll be out adventuring, collecting more wyverns from doing things. And getting back and upgrading them at that stage of the game is a bit of a pain in the in, in the proverbial. But they're a really solid unit. Um, happy to give them a B. 
Um, or happy to give them a B plus actually. Okay, next on the list we have Psychic Elementals and Magic Elementals. Uh, fortunately for the Conflux, as you can see, <laughs> these are excellent. Um, very, very good. You'll want to get the Magic Elemental upgrade pretty quickly. Uh, a basic Psychic Elemental though, if you're stuck with these for a while, solid C. Um, magic Elementals though are really, really special. Immune to every type of spell in the game completely. Um, they share that property only with Black Dragons. Uh, just a great, great unit in large numbers a nightmare to deal with. Um, I would actually give these a really solid A uh, in terms of how uh, impressive they are on the battlefield. Really, really great unit. Um, and yeah, Psychic Elementals. Yeah, so solid. Solid enough. Maybe they deserve a bit better. Uh, maybe they could be in the B- minus sort of camp. Okay, and we are on to tier 7, back to the castle to talk about angels and archangels. Um, wow, uh, how do we begin? The Portal of Glory is expensive. You need the other dwellings and everything lined up, and then it's 20 grand. But angels are great. They're really, really good. Um, you can also get free angels when you conquer the Griffin uh, Conservatories or Griffin Bastions. And, uh, yeah, uh, in large numbers, they're, they're a nightmare. They deal massive damage, fantastic attack, fantastic defense, um, and decent HP for a basic tier 7 creature. Uh, they are really, uh, really, really good, and you're happy to get your Portal of Glory up as quickly as you reasonably can. Obviously, you're going to be investing in other things first. Um, so I think these deserve a spot in the A tier. I, I said I wouldn't put tier 7 units or level 7 units in the A and S just because of the fact that they're strong. But I do think that Angels deserve uh, a special mention up here in uh, in the A rank for just their sheer power. Even though, noting they are, you, you do pay for it, they are expensive. Archangels, uh, it depends on the game you're playing. If you're playing on an expert map, uh, sorry, yeah, not an expert map, an extra large map, uh, these are kind of, I would describe them as tier 8. You know, these are tier 7 creature you got tier 4, tier 6, tier 7 here. These are kind of like tier 8. You've got to spend so much more money again, and they're so much more powerful again than your basic angel. Um, so in terms of value, how valuable is it? It's quite a hard question to answer um, in terms of ranking in a, uh, in a typical game where you're starting from zero resources and you're heading into a late game. Um... If you can afford them, five grand each, I mean, these are 2,500 each. It's spectacular on the battlefield, no one's arguing that. Uh, I think though, over, overall, in terms of the general vibe of things, value for money, uh, what, at times that I'm going to be investing in them, I'm probably only going to give them a B. So don't hate me, but I think these are here somewhere. This could happen a lot with the rest of these tier 7s actually as we go. But let's let's see if we can get there. Okay, in the rampart we have green and gold dragons. And we're talking here of course about spell resistance. These guys can't be hit with anything from level 1 to 4. Level 1 to 3, sorry. 1 to 4 for the gold dragons. Green dragons are really, really good. Worth the investment. Get those cliffs up. This is the second half of the cliff is 20 grand. And a bunch of crystal I think for the gold dragons. So you, yeah, your greenies, um, you can start collecting large numbers of them fairly early in the game, relative in the mid-game. Um, it's not very hard and expensive to bring them online. Uh, so I think these deserve a slot up here alongside um, angels and other creatures like them. Uh, happy enough with that. Gold dragons, again, kind of a tier 8 creature. Very expensive, but extremely amazing, extremely powerful. The spell resistance thing to me matters a lot. It matters more than what the Archangels can do. Okay, the Archangel will beat the dragon in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but the dragon, just with its fire breathing, I haven't even talked about, they have this fire breathing thing, breathing over two hexes, you can get a free hit on a second unit. Really, really nice. Um, I actually think these guys are further up than the Angel for that reason. Similar to the Archangel, I think they're higher up for me than an Archangel. I'm happy for them to be in the uh, A category a bit further down. Uh, than the uh, than the junior guys we're talking about here in terms of value for money. Okay, uh, giants and titans in the tower. 
I like a giant. Ten grand for the Cloud Temple is re very reasonable. You can get these guys up and racing. They're really solid in uh, in numbers if you can get the dwelling up. And this is the problem with the tower town in general that these guys form a bottleneck around which everything else has to rotate. So that wears the giant back down again. I would like to give him an A, but he ends up as a B as a result of that. Um, uh, Titans, on the other hand, yeah, tier eight, five grand a piece, and just spectacular. They have 300 hit points, more than an archangel, and they hit like absolute trucks. I'd love to have the ability in the vanilla game to walk around with them instead of shooting as an option, but even without that, uh, they're still really, really solid. Uh, I think I'd like to put them in the A rank and uh, probably wedge them in here. Um, I think they belong around about there. I'm happy with that. Okay, and moving on to the Inferno, Devils and Arch Devils. Yeah, uh, these guys are great. Really, really good. No retaliate. They've got the combo, right, that we talked about. No retaliation, uber speed. Um, terrifying to go up against. I like them very much. Um, how much do I like them? I like the normal devil about as much as I like these guys. Somewhere in here. Um, and I love upgrading them. I love going for the arch devils as quickly as I reasonably can. Bring them on early on in the late game. Are they special? They're not quite special. They're not quite special, but an arch devil is a really great, great unit. And uh, in large numbers, or as large as you can reasonably get them, uh, in that late game, you're, you're going to be very happy investing in them. And it's a welcome. I mean, e are great as well. Devils, thank goodness the Inferno desperately needed it after a lot of mediocrity earlier on. Um, I don't think I need to wax on too much more about how great they are. If you've played the game, you've pro you're probably familiar with how, how great they are. Uh, next thing on the list is Ghost Bone and Bone Dragons and Ghost Dragons. Ba bow Garbage. Uh, well, look, I don't, pff, garbage is maybe a bit unfair. Yeah, a bone dragon, value for money is okay. It's not expensive, it's not hugely expensive to bring online, but they're really not, they're really not uh, something I'm desperate to bring on as quickly as possible in terms of, you know, getting a far, I think they're movement nine or something. So, how do I feel about a bone? Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I don't want it as much as I want these ones here, so it's going there. I don't have to overthink it. Ghost Dragons, I think, are even worse in terms of value for money as an investment. Quite a lot more expensive, but quite a lot more powerful. Uh, I do like the aging attack. Uh, and my apologies if there's edits in the video here. I have a really itchy nose uh, that I keep itching. <laughs> um, which is causing me to uh, have to just uh, do a couple of cuts here and, here and there. Um, yeah, Ghost Dragons, though... By the time you've invested the money and what you get out of them, I think are probably even worse than Bone Dragons. Not excited about these, and you have to stay down in the E tier, I'm afraid. Red and Black Dragons. Yeah, oh man, so much to be said about these. Red Dragons are kind of similar to Green Dragons in a lot of ways. A lot of similar properties, they behave exactly the same way, almost identical stat lines. Um, which one am I more excited to get to quickly? Probably a little bit more excited to get greenies uh, than I am to get reds. But the red is still a really solid unit for what you get out of it. A few of these in the mid-game, flying around, causing all kinds of mayhem. Better than an angel. I'm, sta I'm saying better than an angel. Um, black dragons are incredible. They're just fantastic. Immune to every spell in the game. 300 HP, cover the map in one hit, breathe fire over two hexes... You get a big stack of these in the late game, you're going to win. Uh, they, they're just an absolute house. You can be very happy sinking your mana into them. You're going to be trying to upgrade the cave uh, to turn your reds into blacks pretty quickly. Um, these are a special unit. Really, really special unit. Uh, they belong up in here. Where exactly? Now, this was the unit I was thinking of earlier when we talked about the Grand Elves. Hmm. Are they better than a Grand Elf? I'm going to come back to that question at the end. I'm going to leave them there for now. Okay? So I'll leave them there. Not quite sure where they're going. They might be the best unit in the game, in my opinion. Uh, oh, we'll see. 
Right, behemoths and ancient behemoths. Uh, a normal behemoth is quite affordable, and he packs a reasonable punch. Yeah, I like a behemoth. I think he's a solid unit. Uh, I'm running out of space in the B tier, but I'm willing to grant. Uh, I'm willing to grant him a spot there, uh, in B. Ancient behemoths are less attractive. Uh, you've got to spend quite a lot of money. They get an increase in that defense reduction ability or whatever. They're quite scary, and 300 HP is great and everything. But uh, stuck, you know, on the ground. They don't have the no retaliation thing. They don't really have a gimmick you know, a, a, something going for them to get excited about. So I think these guys are more in the D sort of category uh, in terms of value for money. Okay, who's next? Hydras and Chaos Hydras. These are not good. Tier 7. I want... This thing can only have five moves or something. Hydras as basic Hydras. No retaliation. Multiple. It attacks all the hexes around it. Oh, I didn't mention that before. These guys have that. They attack every hex around them as well, with no retaliation. And um, high movement and can't have spells cast at them. I didn't wax on about how great these are earlier. I, I wish I could go back to talk about how great magic elementals are. There's a relationship between these two units. This has a similar property, right? Attacks all the hexes around them. Movement 5 takes up two hexes. No other benefits. And it's tier 7 compared to tier 6 with the magic elementals. So Hydra's really, really unappealing. Money, the money you spend on them is pretty reasonable. For what, what you get for your money isn't bad, but in a tier 7 creature, I need better. I mean, they're not worse than these other things we have here, surely. Um, so we'll move those along. Um, yeah. Move those along, pop them there. As for Chaos Hydra's, pretty good upgrade. Uh, I think they get plus 2 movement. They become a little bit more tenable. They are expensive, though, um, to get online. D-ish is, is fine for these guys, I think. All right, drum roll. We have one unit left. Firebirds and Phoenixes. Um, yeah, what can I say? I guess I'm going to start, actually, with the Phoenix. Fastest unit in the game. Very affordable to bring online. You do need Mercury is one key thing. If, you've, if you're low on Merc Mercury, it can be hard. But on top of that, they're cheap. You can buy them. Their individual unit cost is 200... Two th what is it? Two... I'm trying to remember how much they are per bird. They're not very much. They're not, they're, they're not that cheap, sorry. But they're, they're not very much money relative to the other tier 7 upgraded units. And on top of that, another important thing I figured out is that um, you get four a week in terms of growth, which is great uh, compared to the other upgraded or t tier 7 units. The Phoenix has the Fire Breathing ability, it has the Rise from the Ashes ability. Now, if your Phoenixes are dying as a stack, that's really bad. And you don't want the Phoenix to be rising from the ashes. That, that means that things are going badly for you, similar to the Fire Shield effect. It's not as good as it looks because you don't want to be taking so much damage that you're getting a stack of Phoenixes dying. That means the campaign is going badly. Um, but, with that said, you're going to get the first turn every time when you've got phoenixes and your opponent doesn't. And that makes them, even aside from all the other stuff I was just leeting about, very, very special indeed. Where do they belong? They're, they're up here in this, in this, in this vicinity. Uh, I might wedge them in between here and here. And I might demote these guys down a couple of steps just to make room for you know, uh, just to distinguish what we mean by special. There's, there's special, and then there's special, special. Um, and the Phoenix is a really special unit, I think. Um, extremely powerful uh, late game unit. Still going to come back to this question now in a moment. Just to finish off though, Firebirds, yeah, you don't want to be using these for very long, but if you do have to, they're very, very fast, very, very good, and, and very handy. Uh, you're not going to be using them for long though. Um, I, I'd give them a B, let's say, a, a, B, a B plus, similar to a green elf. Yeah, sim similar to a green elf, has the same sort of characteristic going on. Fine unit, but um, you, you don't want to be using them for very long before upgrading. Right, so we have got there, all of the creatures are on the map. We have one final question to solve, which is, who who wins? Is it black dragons or is it grand elves? I honestly hadn't thought about this before starting. 
which one do I think is a more special, amazing unit? Which one is the one that I'm really the most excited about when I get a chance to buy one? I think I'm going to have to go with... I'm going to have to go with the Grand Elf. I think the Grand Elf is the specialist unit, most special unit in the game, uh, and I'm going to put it at the top. Uh, the Black Dragon is a close second. I think the Phoenix comes next. Uh, I like Marksman. Uh, I love Sprites. Uh, and I think these guys are uh, have a bit of a gap. There's a bit of a gap between Sprites and Dragonflies. Vampire Lords would be at the very, very front of everything if they weren't just that little bit more difficult to bring online. Uh, Wyverns are here for a sort of a special reason. They kind of just squeak into the special tier for this weird thing they have going where they're exceptionally easy to bring online. But of course, you know, don't have the same impact on the battlefield that other tier 6 creatures do. So that's it. That's my map. Um, let me see how that panned out. I hope that graphically it looks okay for you guys. Uh, and yeah. Um, so look, if you've stuck with me through the entire video from start to finish, thank you very much. Uh, and I hope that you've enjoyed and that it's been a chill sort of session and uh, that I'd, I'd be interested to see if you guys agree with my classifications. If you think I've been really harsh on anyone, um, I wonder if maybe the Archangel will attract some hatred, if anyone can be bothered commenting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, some other creatures I've said here that I kind of can't stand either, or that I don't really rate very highly. The Mages Archmages thing is a really specific thing related to me and the way I play the game with not having the resources ready to build the thing. It's really frustrating. Um, so there is a lot of context to uh, to, to my decisions um, that, that, that as, as I've placed things on here. Um, uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.